In this video we will show you step by step how to make a CRF with a repeating items group. We will only discuss the items that are necessary to make the CRF. For this we consider the situation where in a study on several days the VO2 max is measured, either by treadmill or by cycle ergometer. We start by downloading a blank CRF template and this we do by clicking Tasks, Section Administration, Item CRFs. In the screen that opens we click on the link Blank CRF Template and we save this template to our desktop. We choose a short name for our CRF, like ACRF. When we switch to our desktop, we can open this CRF by double-clicking it. There are four different tabs in the spreadsheet that we have to complete. CRF, Sections, Groups and Items. The fifth tab of the sheet is Instructions, which can be used for reference. We start with the section CRF and of it with a CRF name and we call our CRF TDS for Trial Data Solutions Repeating Items Group. For version we take V1 and as version description we say this is the initial version. As you can see on the yellow command notes all four fields are required so we type Trial Data Solutions for the Revision Notes field. We move to the next step called Sections. We will use only one section and it will contain a list of measurements done during exercise tests. For the section label we choose something short because only seven characters can be displayed on the tab of the CRF. We call the section Exer and the section title will be Exercise Test. The next step of the sheet is Groups. Here we define the list of items that we want displayed on the CRF. We give the list a name, list of measurements. We choose for the group layout Grid. We want 5 rows to be displayed initially and the maximum number of rows will be 10. Now we can switch to the items. Working with the Excel sheet is easier when the upper row and the first column are locked. So we go to cell B2 and then click Windows Lock Titles. We are ready to enter the items of our repeating group. For each visit the study subject makes, we want to record the date, so we start with the item Visit Date. No spaces are allowed here. The description is Date of Visit and this is just extra information that will not be displayed but that will be included in the codebook of the CRF. Whatever is entered in the cell left item text will be displayed as the header of the column of the CRF. Visit date will do. We jump to column F section label. Here we must use exactly the same name as the one we just defined in the tab Sections. In our case, this is Exers. Because our item is included in a group, we type in column G the label of the group we defined, List of Measurements. We jump to column N, the response type. This is the type of input that will be used in the CRF, and for a date, this is type text. There's one more thing to provide and that's the data type which is the format in which the item is stored in the database. In our case this is date. The second item we want to record is the question if the test was performed. We fill in item name, description and left item text. Note that the description is much more informative than the left item text. Section label and group label are of course the same as the previous item, but for response type we choose radio. A group of radio buttons must have a name, and we will call our group yes-no. 
We write the options yes and no separated by a comma in column response options text. We will not store the words yes and no in the database, but the integers 1 and 2. And these are called response values. In column R, response layout, we can define how we want the radio buttons to be displayed, horizontally or vertically, and we choose horizontal. As we mentioned before, we will store the integers 1 or 2 in the database, so our data type is int for integer. The third item is test type, and this is either treadmill or cycle ergometer. We choose single select for the response type. Again, we must choose a name for our set of options in the single select, and this will be test type. The items for this select will be treadmill and cycle ergometer, but we will add an empty option, so the list starts with a comma. Now we have in fact three options, so we must provide three values. In this case we choose the characters T and C, again preceded by an empty value. In this case the data type must be ST for string. Our last item will be the value of VO2 max. We want to enter the values in the text box and the data type will be integer. After we've saved our Excel sheet, we can upload it to OpenClinica. Our browser is still in the screen Manage Case Report Forms, and in this screen we click the link Create a new CRF. In the screen that opens, we can browse to the Excel sheet on our desktop. After we have selected it, we can click Preview CRF version, and this will validate the information in the Excel sheet without writing anything to the database yet. In the upper left column we see a message saying that our spreadsheet generated no errors. Once we click continue, the information will be written to the database. In the top of our screen we now see that the data was committed successfully. Of the list of four links we choose Go back to the Build Study page. In this screen, we can add an event or visit to our study and then assign the CRF to it so we can test it. To add an event, we click the plus icon to the right of Task 3 Create Event Definitions. For the name of the event, we take Tests and we give a description. The type of event we will set to Common. We choose this because our CRF will hold data collected not on just one date, but on several dates. Now we click continue and a list appears of all available CRFs. To filter this list we type repeating in the filter box and click find. We select our new CRF and click continue. For the properties of this CRF for this event, we will accept all the defaults, so we click Continue and then Confirm and Finish. We are now ready to see what our CRF looks like and we do this by going to the subject matrix. We already have a subject and we click on the icon of our new event Tests and then choose Schedule. This may be a bit confusing because we just stated that an event of type Common is not associated with one particular date. But a date for an event is required, so we choose the default, today, and click Proceed to enter data. In the screen Enter or validate data for CRFs in tests, we click the pencil icon of our new CRF and finally we can admire it.